Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of The DVC Show, coming to you from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends from dbcrentalstore.com, Mr. Paul Krieger. Hey, everybody. From monerafinancial.com, Ms. Amy Krieger. Hello. From dbcresalemarket.com, uh, Danny Metzger. Happy to be back. And also from DVC Resale Market. Uh, Ms. Linda Smith. Hey guys, thrilled to be here. And uh, of course, back in the production nook, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams, Hi. who I don't even know why I'm introducing because he has nothing to say during these shows, right? He doesn't, <laughs> you know, he's not a DBC member, so he doesn't have anything to say. But we love him anyway. We love him anyway. Even if, you know, as DBC members, we look down <laughs> our nose at him for not being. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, just a reminder, folks, this show, along with all of our DBC content, Brought to you courtesy of D, uh, the world of DVC, which includes DVCresalemarket.com, where you can buy your next or your first DVC resale contract, save a lot of money over going direct. Uh, DVCrentalstore.com, where you're able to rent points or rent out your points if you'd like to try DVC. For example, before you buy, great way to do that is to rent points. Um, from DVC Rental Store. Uh, also, if you're just looking to save some money over uh, what a hotel room at the same resort is going to cost you, definitely check DVCRentalStore.com. And of course, uh, Monera Financial, our favorite crack dealers, um, <laughs> MoneraFinancial.com, where you can finance your DVC resale purchase. Um, so please, folks, if you enjoy our content, please show your love and support to our sponsors. Um, spam call. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, this week we are going to talk about, uh, we're going to do a resort spotlight. And this week we are going to talk about Polynesian. And uh, I'm going to say up front that the Polynesian used to be my favorite resort at Walt Disney World until I went to Alani. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, Polynesian is nice. It's kind of a character of uh, Ho Hawaiian, whereas, you know, uh, Alani was so authentic, was so authentic. So it kind of, I mean, I still love the Polynesian, don't get me wrong, mm. but I, I won't classify it as my, my favorite resort. And you guys love it. So, yeah, so I, you probably don't remember this, but I used to, like, harp on the Polynesian, and you, like, called me out. It was before I was on DVC shows, so you called me out from my couch, I guess. Um, it, I can't remember what the show was. It was, like, oh, something about dad DVC opinions or something. I don't know. Unpopular DVC opinions. Uh, well, but, because uh, let me be very, very clear. I, yeah. I do not think there is anything wrong with the Polynesian. Yeah. I think it's lovely. Okay, it's an absolutely beautiful resort. Uh, its location can't be beat. Um, it's just that, you know, for me, when I first went there, that was really my only, because I'd never been to Hawaii, that was like my only uh, exposure to mm. Polynesian culture. Um, and when you say culture and Polynesian in the same sentence, you got to use air quotes. <laughs> um, and then, of course, going to Olani, yeah. um, where that culture was taken so seriously and so woven into the very fabric of that resort at every turn. Um, it's like, yeah, okay, this, <laughs> this is the ultimate Polynesian resort. So, um, yeah, so I had called the Polynesian tacky, and you, you called me out on it, but I do... See, I don't think it's tacky. Yeah. I don't think it's tacky. I, it's definitely, it has, it has grown on us a lot, like, like exponentially in the last however many years. As, as a matter of fact, we, we just closed a few months ago on a Polynesian contract. Um, so, so we do, we have kind of, like, kind of understood it a little bit better, and understood, like, you called it, like, a caricature of... You know, not it's not just Hawaii, but it represents South Pacific. Yeah, all all of the Polynesian islands. You know, Fiji and and Bora Bora and Moria and you know all the names of the longhouses. But um, you know, over time, I think we have just we've been there. You know, now that we we are local, we visit it a lot more, and we've come to appreciate it 
for, for what it is and what it stands for. And I think that the Polynesian, you know, of all the DVC resorts, um, I feel like it has one of the biggest, like, I don't want to call it like a cult following, but it does have this like following of fans. Oh yeah, you know who will who will. Um, and know. understandably so. Yeah. Really, I take nothing away from that. Nothing yeah. at, away from that at all. Mm-hmm. I don't want anybody to misinterpret that I hate the Polynesian because mm-hmm. anytime I say something like that, <laughs> you know, oh Pete hates the Polynesian. No, I don't at all. Not even close. I love it every time I go over there. I like I said, it just suffers in comparison for me. Suffers in comparison when you've been to Alani. It, when you, when you said tacky, was it the theming that you? Th- I think so. The first time we ever stayed there, it was like this carpet is like looks like bright orange, like it could be the shag carpet at my grandma's house, and it was just like the little trinkets that made me feel like it belonged in like the seventies. Um, it has since been been updated, and um, I just it's it's beautiful now. Um, but I, I I actually even appreciate what it looked like back then more more now. You know what I mean? Like I love those the pictures of the little tiki birds that were above the the couch in the studios, and I loved. The colors, you know, the, the splashes of reds, I do miss that. Um, but, you know, overall, I, I do think the Polynesian is just, it's a very well-loved resort um, for not just DVC members, but I believe it's its the most requested rental, right, when, mm-hmm. for DVC rental store. Is it really? Yeah. Outside, of, outside of the smaller ones like Beach Club or Grand Cal, which is just impossible to get into ever, it's just, it's in the center of the action. It's right there. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, footsteps from Magic Kingdom. So you're going to be right there. Um, and to chime in on this discussion about sort of tacky, not tacky, we have to remember sort of the history of the Polynesian. Like it came, it, it was a baby, I think, of that like 1970s ish sure. tiki culture. Uh, it reminds me of like my grandma's old basement where it was mismatched carpet tiles and tiki bar and all of that kind of stuff. So when it was originally designed, I think part of those elements uh, is why it feels the way it does. And I think now they're trying to maybe go more into that authentic direction. So um, it's definitely not Alani, like you said, Pete, but I think it's starting to try to find its path forward as it comes into a uh, a, a new century or heck it's it's going on 50 years old now yeah, yeah. And, and that's yeah. just it it was one of the first <clears throat> disney resorts ever too so when you step in there for those of you who have been going to disney for so many years like it brings you back to the first time you stepped now foot something something i heard i don't know if this is true or not um but something i heard a, a long time ago was that the polynesian was actually the first Disney resort to have guests in it. Because uh, right before the opening of Walt Disney World, they had a lot of celebrities uh, in town to open the park. Lucille Ball, uh, Bob Hope. Mm -hmm. Um, And the contemporary wasn't ready. They were literally getting the contemporary ready they were laying sod down mm-hmm. in front of the contemporary the morning that Walt Disney World <laughs> Listen, opened. That is so, like, history repeats itself. Because <laughs> when we stayed at the new Grand Florian Villas, that's what they were doing when we were rolling our luggage in on opening day. They were putting sod down outside. So that's just funny. So technically, <laughs> technically, according to what I heard, again, it could, you know, may, may not be true, um, but uh, that... Uh, you know, all those celebrities were put up at the Polynesian. Yeah. So what you're saying is you weren't one of those celebrities? I was not. Oh. I was not. I would have, it was only like <laughs> seven, not even seven young. years yeah, old. Way too young. young. Way too young. When Disney World opened. Yeah. Um, and you know, the Polynesian had to come, right? It finishes the triad of the monorail. So you know they had to do it. And the interesting thing, of course, this is, you know, big discussion ongoing forever and ever and ever is, you know, they're never going to admit that there was kind of a mistake made there in the Disney Vacation Club where they didn't put one bedrooms. Yeah. And that's an ongoing, and I'm thinking and praying and hoping that the new tower is an expansion and not a freestanding because that really would mend that loss of that favorite size home and a two bedroom. Because let's face it, that bungalow is ginormous points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely ginormous. So I, I think, but to what you said earlier, Polynesian is like a cult following. That's a very, very popular group. They absolutely love it. You can always tell when you talk to them. I personally love the Dole Whip. 
That's like my oh, favorite. My <laughs> love that stuff. I love. I dream about Dolwood. Well, and, and so, uh, to what you were alluding to, um, you know, they are building this new expansion, this new tower at the Polynesian. It has. It is now towering over the skyline of this area. Um, if you've not been out there recently, it just they brought that thing up fast and they're going to probably be getting to the interior of certain sections of it very quickly and i wonder if they're trying to sort of bring two generations together you know you've got the polynesian where they've made updates to it but if you touch it too much you know that that cult following is going to get pretty angry um you know they're not gonna they're not gonna be too happy that you touched the beloved um polynesian whereas you know, the the running joke with the new expansion and the tower is that it kind of looks a little bit like a Marriott meets a little bit of a Polynesian, um, which is that newer vibe and that, that, that fresher vibe that maybe a younger generation wants. So it's it's interesting to see a resort this old with Disney. See, but you're messing with... History. History, <laughs> yeah. right? And you're messing with the charm. There is a charm to the Polynesian and its longhouses. Mm-hmm. Right, that are you know two stories high, right? Yeah. Three, yeah. Three stories. Mm-hmm. Um, these are not towers. No. Um, you know the reason they got away with Bay Lake Tower is that you know it fits in with what the contemporary looks like. It's not like you know here's one building and here's something completely different. This tower, I'm afraid, is going to look. Like they plunked a Marriott down in the middle of the Polynesian. And it's kind of sad, isn't it? Because when you think about it, every single Disney Vacation Club resort and really the hotels are set in the past, except the contemporary. And what happens when you set something in the future? It's always coming at you. You're always going to have to update the future where the past is the past. It's been done. And the Polynesian is very much in that historical realm of all the other DVCs that are set in the past. So, so oh, sorry about that, um, the big purple thing. And um, the contemporary is just always, so Bay Lake Tower at some point will look dated. They'll have to redo it, they have to redo oh. it. It has to be contemporary. It does. Yes. <laughs> it does already, yeah. Has to freshen, has to look, you know, we call it the George Jetson Resort. But um, yeah, that's the only one, guys, that are set, that's set in the future. Everything else is supposed to be set in the past. And is it gonna be one of those things where you go to check in? You know when you go to check into a hotel that has multiple buildings and, and at the front desk they hand you your keys and the first thing you're like, am I staying in the main building or, or am I out? there like you know with the, the rejects <laughs> and then and you're like is there any way i could get in the main building you know well, the thing you, with you, polynesian is there is no main building you know well um, yeah i mean but, <laughs> but the og the original you know are you gonna feel like i don't know i don't want to be staying in this <laughs> Far away DVC, DVC is very good about like the different booking categories for you know what I mean like Animal Kingdom Lodge is is separate if you want to book Jumbo House you want to book book Kadani Grand Floridian it's separate if you want to book the original villas versus what's in Big Pine Key like there's separate booking categories so I think that that'll be very spelled out and, and we don't we haven't determined yet if it's going to be the same association or not um, I did a whole article when I why I thought it would be the same association, but it's you know it's still up in the air right now. Um, we're still waiting to find that out. But you know I, I, I do want to get back to the whole just just the Polynesian in general and, and all the things that we that we have going for it. Um, it has a lot of like you know some good restaurants like Kona Cafe and um, Ohana and and the quick service uh, Captain Cooks. But something that I really am hoping is coming into the new tower, which we I don't think we know yet, is I would love to see some sort of signature dining experience at mm. the Polynesian. And I would love to see them at it, you know, at least. Yeah, because it doesn't have one. Yeah, to the top of the DVC tower yeah. or something. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Something, something that's very like Ama Ama-ish um, from Alani. Again, we're back to, I th- we've talked to Al- Alani on every show. <laughs> yeah, I feel we like have. We've done. Um, but. But to that to that point, you know, it does need sort of that signature dining establishment to sort of round out that feel of those those restaurants. But I'm I'm a huge huge fan of Kona Cafe. You know, I I love I, Kona Cafe. I, I don't think you can get a bad meal there, and people always overlook it because of Ohana. And it's like Ohana is really the one where you really don't know what you're going to walk into. Well, on, you know, on a look, nightly basis. I, let's just let's be students of history. Uh, Kona yeah. Cafe. Uh, has had a history of going through peaks and valleys. Uh, there have been times where it's very good, and there have been times where not so much. 
Um, but I think, you know, lately in particular, I think the last review I did, it's been a while, but last review I did, of I, I, I gave it glowing uh, uh, marks. Um, but, you know, you look at something like Ohana, um, the real big complaint with Ohana is the service. You are rushed mm -hmm. through your meal. You are rushed through your meal. And, you know, we, we hammered them about that for a long time, hoping to get it to change. And they, I, I, we know for a fact that their management heard this, heard what we were saying and what we were doing, and made no changes whatsoever. I was talking to somebody that was there like last month, and he's like, yeah, it was like running a race. It's like running the race. They, the way they, they, they push you mm -hmm. through your through your meal <laughs> um, to turn those tables over. And I get it. It's a popular restaurant, but you know. Uh, but I agree. Kona Cafe. I love Kona Cafe. Absolutely love it. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I just love it. What um, about Trader Sam's? <laughs> you, you know, I'm. I, I my first exposure to Trader Sam's was at the Disneyland Hotel, the original. Yeah. And the one here just does not live up. I've, I what, haven't been to say. the original. Yeah. I, agree. I, I completely concur with that. Mm -hmm. we, okay, so what are the yeah. differences? Because I haven't been to the original one, but I thought it was such a cool concept. Like okay. I felt like I was in like a little speakeasy. Like the, I, well, I knew the, the secret. The, the, the original one, um, the actual bar itself uh, is uh, very, very small. Um, very small. Smaller um, than... Yeah, the actual interior okay. bar itself does not hold a lot of people. Um, they rely heavily on the patio that sits outside. Um, now, this one is larger at the Polynesian. Um, and, you know, I know that the decor in the original out in California was done by uh, Kevin Kidney and Jody Daly. Um, who are, you know, really legendary former Imagineers um, that Disney still contracts to do different projects and parades and things like that. And this was one of the things. I don't know if they were as involved or involved at all with the Trader Sam's here. It doesn't have the same charm, the same vibe. There's just something about it at the Disneyland Hotel. And again, it was my first experience to it. Um, I cannot be in Disneyland. I cannot be in California uh, at the Disneyland, any of the Disneyland resorts, without spending time mm. at Trader Sam's. Isn't yeah. it funny how Disney just does that? They have that effect. Like, I remember when I was little and we used to stay at the Valley Resorts and I was like, this is the coolest hotel I've ever seen. And then you stay at a moderate and you're like, oh, I can never go back and it's like you you with Polynesian and then you went to Alani and you're like well yeah. that doesn't compare and it's just each experience you have at Disney each you know product that you well this is one of the reasons I'm not a massive fan of them recreating Some, things that yeah. are unique to Disneyland in Walt Disney World mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. a fan mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know for example people say oh I wish you know, and I've said this I wish they would bring the Haunted Mansion uh, overlay, the Christmas overlay, yeah. uh, to our Haunted Mansion. But at the same time, there's that part of me that says, no, it's special yeah, at right. Disneyland. You mm -hmm. have to go out there to experience and it. And so I was, yeah, that I was not. I mean, I understood why they did it, why they added it. But I never, I, I, I find no charm at the one at the Polynesian, personally. I find no charm at that one. Yeah. In terms of the current Polynesian, and you know, we've alluded to hopefully getting one <laughs> bedrooms and two bedrooms in the future here. Um, I think it's important for anyone that might be considering, you know, buying at the Polynesian or staying at the Polynesian to know is that all of these rooms essentially are deluxe studio rooms. So they are the smaller studio rooms. One perk of these studio rooms is that they do have a split bathroom concept. So it is probably one of the biggest bathroom concepts that are in some of the Disney Vacation Club rooms because you do have uh, a room with a sink and a shower and then you have a separate room with a sink, a tub shower combo and a and a restroom. Yeah, and that second room is huge. Yeah. Like 
there's people that put their pack and plays in there. <laughs> like it's it's big. <laughs> So, yeah, and you can get yeah. adjoining studios as well. And those adjoining studios, when you think about it, if you can't, you know, you think, well, there's no two bedroom here. The adjoining studios means you have sleeping for 10 people and four showers. And use less adjoined. points than a two bedroom. Yeah, substantially yeah. less than that bungalow that's there. Yeah, yeah. if it, the bungalow is the only other option, it is a two bedroom bungalow, sleeps up to eight people. Um, but again, even at its lowest night on the point chart, 112 points going all the way up to 226 uh, for the highest. So you're buying a lot of points if you want a week and, in a bungalow. You know, there's a number of reasons for that, uh, you know, uh, but one of the reasons is that view. Those bungalows have an mm. unobstructed view of Cinderella Castle yeah. and the Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. and at fireworks time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at fireworks time, yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Yep. Now, personally, personally, I prefer the cabins at uh, Copper Creek. Uh, for, yeah. I do as well, but it is such a unique experience too. Like if you think people, how much money people pay to stay in those over the water bungalows in Bora Bora. Yeah. Like, so it, it's, it's a unique experience. Are you going to do like an entire week there? Probably not. But what a lot of members do is they'll stay in a studio for most of their trip and then do like one or two nights at the end of their stay. Um, are you going to do it every time? Probably not. But it, it's like a bucket list, yeah. you know, item mm -hmm. that and you it, could check off. And as long as you're not going during peak season, I mean, it, it's pretty readily available at the seven month booking window. If you do have like some cheap, like we call them sleep around points. Um, so if you've got some cheaper points that, that, you know, you're not caring how you use them, you can use them in this more flexible way and kind of make that bungalow uh, a little bit more affordable than it would be if you actually bought Polynesian points fully for that. Um, so we've got deluxe studios, we've got the two bedroom bungalows, and this is sort of, um, Linda, you alluded to earlier, the, the issue over the years at the Polynesian is that we've only got these two room types. The bulk of the, the point charts are kind of nestled into these bungalows um, because they've inflated the cost of these bungalows so much. So um, it is a resort for people that love studios, and that's one of the main reasons why we chose to, to purchase there is yeah. that you know we are studio people we always you know stay in studios and so it makes sense and um historically speaking it's been a resort that has uh, held its value very well uh, you know it, oh, yeah. the demand for uh, we talked about it earlier the demand for rentals at polynesian is huge yeah. the demand for resale at polynesian and, is huge. and just even you know and step further economically when you look at the low annual dues at the polynesian com you know and then join that with the longer contract date you know compared to some of the other resorts um it is a good value economically um to purchase on the resale market yeah. and those studios are huge those studios are 447 yeah, square feet nice size yeah. biggest one studio built to this day well again because those rooms were built yes. back in the 70s mm -hmm. when that's yeah. what you had that's square footage for cost. a hotel room yeah um they were you know the, the all the original uh, Disney uh, resorts, the contemporary, the Polynesian, mm -hmm. uh, in specific, um, you know, very, very the largest rooms on property because that's what they did back in 1971. It's cheaper, yeah, yeah, to build that way. You bet. To me, there's just something when like the sun goes down and those tiki torches come on, you know, all around the the resort and that music, like you can just hear it playing. Like there, the resort has just such a great vibe. And you know, it, even if you're not staying in a room where you can see uh, the fireworks, you can walk down to the beach, you know, sit, you know, sit down on the beach and they pipe in that music and you can watch them from there. Uh, so th there are just there's just a lot of great reasons, you know, to, to own at the Polynesian with your Dole Whip in hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is that is that pretty much our spotlight? Anything else we want to add? I, I'll, I'll quickly throw in just transportation. Um, I would argue that Polynesian is actually one of the best when it comes to transportation. So not only do you have, yeah, it's a monorail resort, so you've got the monorail coming to you right there. Um, you basically are just a couple steps away from the TTC, um, the Ticket and Transportation oh, yeah. Center, where you're going to be able to take a monorail to Epcot as well hop on the ferry boat to get over. There are boats that run from the Polynesian. You could technically walk to Magic Kingdom if you wanted to do the hike and go past Grand Floridian. And well, right now it's like, 
you got to go over the road and into shades of green. And it'll be better soon. It'll be better <laughs> soon once construction's better. But, um, you know, construction's good as well. Um, and I'll throw this out there only because I've heard, I've heard a little bit about it. You know, Amy and I recently bought Polynesian. We bought at the low point of the market. Um, we got an incredible deal on the Polynesian. Um, I believe that, you know, prices on the resale market have sort of increased a little bit since we purchased. So, um, you know, talk to, you know, Linda, Danny, um, they're going to be able to sort of guide you as to what the best value at, at the Polynesian is currently. Um, but but also very important to remember that Disney is still not buying back in Rofer. So yeah. while it is, you have to remember, like, yes, is it going to be a little bit higher than it was a couple months ago? It is. But what could it go up to also once Disney starts buying back again? So. Yeah, right now you're looking at like 175 point contract. 156 a point. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, still, yeah. It's still like two very something good. Direct, isn't it? 200 yeah. yep. something. Yep. Yeah, I think it's 217. Yeah, something to that effect. Or, or no, what? No, no. Polynesian is like 250 or 265. Is it really something direct? Yeah, it's way up there. And the thing about the market, to piggyback what Danny said, is we're seeing prices right now of three and four years ago. This is pre-COVID. Because it turned into a buyer's market. The market changed quite a bit starting last December and started to slide down. But now it is starting to uptick a little bit. So even if you do have to pay a little bit more to just reemphasize that, get in, find a contract, and do it. Because you wait six months, you're going to probably kick yourself that, oh, that was a great one there. I probably should have done it then. That's just it. Don't get hung up in the past. Don't get stuck because you saw online that somebody got it at you know $10 cheaper because all that time you're like oh i wish i got it ten dollars cheaper it can keep creeping, keep creeping up, up and yeah. then you're looking back and you're like why didn't i you know in a few years from now you're going to be so happy that you jumped in when you did yeah and the rofer monster as we like to call it is is hibernating yeah. but we don't know when the bear comes out of the cave at some point in time yeah. down the road it may be a while but disney always has to have a drop product so for people that don't want to buy riviera and they don't want to buy grand, you know, when they go through some of that inventory, they may be back out buying someday. So just a great time overall, guys. And we're also pretty limited on Polynesian inventory. So if you have a contract that you want to sell, there's a lot of people that want to buy Polynesian as well. All right, there you have it. That is our look at Disney's Polynesian Resort. Uh, and that will do it for our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next week with another episode of the DVC Show. Have a great week, folks.